Well, hello there. Welcome to the last King of Fighters game on the Atomus Wave arcade platform. This was released a couple of months after Neo Geo Battle Coliseum, and for the next King of Fighters game, SNK turned it up to 11. Welcome to a game that took a couple of 2003's negatives and flipped them upside down into positives. I've been both looking forward to this game and dreading it. Because it means using my old PlayStation 2, but let's look at this cast of characters. These are some pretty unlikely team makeups we got going here, but... Notice a few characters missing. A few characters not on screen. I'm noticing the lack of Mai Shiranui. One of the most prolific SNK characters. And she's not playable? No Mai, no buy, am I right? Wrong. The PlayStation 2 version got a few Neo Geo Battle Coliseum characters added to the mix, and granted, this is not all of them. For this game, I'm using Adelheid. And that means we're not using a preset team once again. Because this game has one of the most infamous bosses in KOF's history, and believe me, that is saying something. So, needless to say, I'm coming prepared. But let's focus on the linchpin of our team, the reason we're going to get a story ending. Adelheed. I mentioned him in 2003, and I fought him over the game's actual boss. Because just... So fun. That is standing C to back B. Back B is a special command normal that puts out three kicks. Forward B is a regular kick into an overhead. This dude can mess you up. Still has the kick waves. Still has the energy reflect that I'm going to forget to use. And all three of those kicks in his back B and normal can all be special canceled. It's pretty cool. And what would a Rugal like be without a Kaiser wave? He's too cool. You win. Of all the Sun characters or the Offspring characters to show up in SNK games, he's by far my favorite. Because this is a guy that just likes to fight. We split Rugal's more violent tendencies onto his daughter rather than his son, which I like. Anywho, our old standby, Kula Diamond. In this game, she is one of the best in the game. This is normal like that. That's just down forward C. 
And of course she has the slide that takes her halfway across the screen. It is worth noting CD attacks are back. And there are special orbs above the super meter that let you do other cool things. They govern super canceling, and they, uh, they govern other defensive moves, like the ability to tag out even when you're getting your butt handed to you. There are also shift tag combos, which you can tag someone in midway through your combo. I don't think you're going to be seeing that here, but it is a thing. And finally, this game uses all the PlayStation 2 buttons. You don't necessarily have to press two face buttons together to tag someone out. It's a shoulder button now. Which is very nice. You win! And that just leaves us with our secret weapon. Pulled straight from the pages of Neo Geo Battle Coliseum is Tung Fu Ryu. Let it go! Ooh, fast little guy. The charge fireball knuckles. He can call upon his spirit form to fight for him. None of that, please. He can use a, a real bout esque EX version of his dashing knuckle attack. So, unfortunately, take note of Kung's health bar and what it's not going to do. Once again, much like 2003, you don't recover health when you're inactive. I've never understood why SFK didn't do that at least, because any Marvel vs. Capcom game worth their salt, aka most of them, will have you recover a little bit of health, at least. Gotta please. Gotta also debuted in 2003, along with his Octa Griffin. But we didn't run into that team. Thank God, because Gato is also one of the best characters in the game. Shock. Shock, I am shocked. Well, oh, not that shocked. When your character has built-in mix-up tools, superiority tends to happen. New challenges! So every fourth fight, you get a new challenger. And they can vary. Adelheed is the normal fight. But you can pull in characters from an obscure SNK game called Bariki 1 for this encounter instead. It's neat seeing Rose be an on-screen personality now, rather than just playing the piano. Not just that. If you do a special command, she she can hang out and sort of cheer you on. Like, hurry up and get this over with, brother. That type of thing. Hurry up and finish him off. And trust me, sis, I'm working on it.
Okay. Gonna need you to back up now. That does not bode well for what we've got going ahead. Because if we're having trouble on Adelheed... The rest aren't exactly going to be a cakewalk. Speaking of... These are the guys that are part of a clan we did not see in 2003, whose main goal is to revive Orochi. But there seems to be an internal struggle within the group. Well, that doesn't come back to bite us. Speaking of characters we did not meet in 2003, the new hero, Ash Crimson. His time will come on this channel, I assure you. For now, Ash has just been hanging out and actually being a bit of a mischievous scam. In 2003, he stole Chizuru's power and incapacitated her and implied straight to Iori Yagami's face that he's next. And then there's this guy who really, really likes card games. I hate to say it, pal, but you're a few years too late. Things are kind of lagging a bit. Never seen this game lag before. Alright. Now things get rough. Down you go. You win. That's Shen Wu. He punches you a lot. Woohoo, not much else to say about him. Not that I don't hate him, but he has about as much character as there are letters in the word character. Keeping the team order. But these are mostly assets from 2003, but the game sounds nicer. We have a new board to take advantage of just higher quality audio. So things sound a lot clearer. It sounds like a new game. Pity they're still using sprites from 1996. And you're giving me trouble, so I need to get you out. Yeah. 
Careful when you super cancel, kids. They ain't free in this game. Elizabeth, you go do your own thing with your horse whip and your whiffing projectiles. I'll just be over here relaxing, telling you about how cool Kung Fu is. It's worth noting that EX Knuckle I'm doing, that doesn't cost a thing. But Chaos 11 is an improvement over 2003, but it still doesn't quite have the perks that make its competitor, the Marvel vs. Capcom series, what it is. Good girl, Kula, that was all you. And that brings us to our main event. We show up at the tournament site itself and hey, it's already pre-destroyed, how convenient. Say hello to our sub boss. This is Xion. He's one of the most unique characters on the roster. And you'll see exactly why real quick. He's got a big old spear. He doesn't mind using it. He will retract it for more close range combos, and he will pull it out and keep you at bay. Xion player's job is to do both. an invisible projectile it feels like. He pokes you and then you just get hurt. Here. He doesn't mind mixing you up from every range. Thankfully, all of that still hits at the same range. It's not like you get mixed up. As you can see, I'm going to be picking my moments against this character. Because otherwise, he can just mix you, and it's not a good time. Right, just having a moment to myself. Also not good. Could you not? With the moves and the thing. There we go. Cancelled a lot earlier than I wanted to, but thank god I wasn't punished for it. But don't worry. That was just the appetizer. We did all of that just so they could 
bring about the return of Orochi. How well's that working out for you? Mukai was the boss of 2003 that we avoided because I don't feel like getting stoned to death. But this boss is unavoidable. Welcome to the most infamous boss in SNK history. You're gonna find out why real damn quick. My goal here is to get in his face as fast and as frequent as possible. Because if you give him room, he'll dice you from every distance. As you can see, that was a move he did at close range. Look at how much of my life bar remained afterward. I'm gonna be keeping my distance. It's pretty much, I can't really commit to anything with this boss. I'm also not going to be using any supers. At least we're gonna try to not use any super. I don't know if that's going to be able to stay to that promise. But his deal, he can work magic with portal, and he uses this to throw out fireballs that not only cover the field, but stay on the field. This is not good. There are times I will get lucky with this boss. I will beat him first try, or I will beat him on my 21st try. This is not one of them. But so long as you're patient, so long as you recognize his fireballs, it's not that big a deal. And having myth usually helps! Secret weapon, motherfucker. Secret weapon. That leader move costs two bars, is incredibly powerful, has little to no startup, and does a crap ton of damage for the investment. First try. Who said this boss was hard again? Jeez. Give me something a little more challenging next time. Ignis gave me more trouble. The original Zero gave me more trouble. Clone Zero gave me more trouble. Rugal gave me more trouble. You overhyped this guy. I mean, he's tough, don't get me wrong, but you just have to play his game and not your game. If you come prepared, he's a total joke, just like he is right now. Chion came out of the void to personally stab Magaki and end his day. And thus, this year's King of Fighters met its turbulent end. The tournament concluded, nobody got what they wanted. The situation would only grow more chaotic as time went on. And the game would only grow more beautiful as time went on. And Magaki's body was not at, nowhere to be found, but mysteriously stolen. But yeah, that fight's a pushover. I laugh at people that say that boss is hard. He's not. As long as you have the right character, he's nothing. But that's the King of Fighters 11. An upgrade, but not one I frequently go back to. It's an okay game. I can respect, I can especially respect its roster. Having Battle Coliseum characters thrown in, having people make their one and only KOF appearance, like uh, Hotaru, for instance. This would be her one and only KOF appearance to date. Hoping for her in KO at 15, but probably not going to happen. 
I think the style for this game is a little iffy. Like a couple of their UI presentation is very un-KOF. Not to say it's a bad thing, but it's just very I I guess I guess different is the word we're gonna stick with. So afterwards, SNK would move on to a new platform with the company Taito. And it's where they would make most of their arcade games from that point forward. But until then. Game over. It's game over for now. We do have a couple more games to get to before we get back to mainline KOF proper. But trust me, they're worth it. Maybe not the next game on our list, but the rest are worth it.